in Fortnite, one of the most critical things that you need to win fights is game sense. And an essential aspect of game sense is being able to confuse your enemy, right? Because as long as you can keep your opponent guessing, then they're gonna be left clueless and you're gonna have an easy time really outplaying them. And that's why for this video, I'm so excited guys, because we went ahead and we compiled nine incredible building techniques designed to confuse your opponents, which we got from none other than FaZe Martaz. All right, Martaz is easily one of the smartest fighters in all of Europe, and these techniques helped him acquire over 70,000 arena points. If this is not proof that these moves are insane, I really don't know what is. But anyways, these were the best confusion techniques that we saw from Martaz, so let's get this thing going. All right, guys, so getting into this thing, all right, the first trick that we got from Martaz is the low ground ramp phase, which you could use to sneak in a shot on anybody attacking your box from above. Now, to set this up, you want to position near the middle of your box, just around the point where only your head is sticking through your stairs before you place them. And if you're in the correct spot, your ramp should turn yellow and phase when built, allowing you to shoot and edit through it as if, you know, it weren't even there. What's great about this one is that the stairs are still visually there, so plenty of players won't see you clearly, and if they're attacking from above, they really won't see any sort of retaliation coming. Martaz has used this several times in his montage, and it seems to work really good. And once you get your shot off and you wanna stop phasing, all right, you have two options. Either walk forward to end up underneath, or jump backwards and you're gonna end up on top of your ramp. Also, while we didn't see Martaz do it, you can also do this trick with the cone, which, while more challenging, might confuse your even more. All you have to do is edit your cone into a ramp that goes above you, then you walk forward a bit toward the middle and switch the cone edit to a forward facing ramp, which should phase you just like a typical ramp would. Overall, I gotta say this, both are so amazing, both techniques work really, really good, and it definitely should confuse your opponents pretty hard. All right, this next trick, the cone reversal is also really confusing, especially useful when taking walls. So with this one, what Martaz would do is take a wall, edit it open, and then immediately cone. Pretty standard stuff. But when he wants to confuse his opponent, he takes it a step forward by editing the two closest tiles of that cone. Then, as he runs up toward his opponent, he opens the edit, resets the cone, and then selects the two front tiles before confirming, which flips the edit and allows access to the enemy. Why is this one so good, you ask? All right, well, a lot of players will go for a shot once they see you take the wall. So by editing the cone into a ramp, you can potentially block that shot, all while moving closer to the enemy, so you can just land a nastier shot of your own. The only times this technique might not be as beneficial are if traps are added back to the game or if your opponent holds their shotgun out and just waits patiently. But let's be real, like most players are hasty and you know have no patience and will probably just end up panicking. All right, so this next technique from Martaz has you fake exiting out the top of your box only to actually strike from a wall edit. So essentially, if someone is attacking your wall, you could just juke them into just thinking you're about to exit out the top of your box by editing your cone into a ramp and then performing a floor edit. But instead of just following through and just exiting out the top, you reset your cone and immediately edit open your wall for a shot. Overall, this one is pretty useful since most players are instantly going to just fixate on you exiting out once they hear both your cone and floor get edited. But if you're not the most mechanically skilled, you might have a little trouble, all right? So as always, make sure to practice to get the technique down. And just like Martaz fakes exiting out the top, all right, he also fakes exiting out the side, which is even more useful for when players are trapped inside your box with you. For this one, Martaz edits a wall either to a side or behind him, and then just rather than exit, he instead splits his ramp. And so by editing a wall to your side or even behind you, you're misdirecting your opponent into thinking, you know, that's that's where you're gonna go before just editing your ramp and going for the shot. And it's great because if you can get your opponent to position their crosshairs somewhere else, it reduces the chances. They'll be ready to shoot and it really turns what is usually a 50-50 encounter to something more in your favor. All right guys, so the most advanced move in this video is probably Martaz's side jump counter. Now we all know about side jumping by now, but if you don't, check out this video right here. But Martaz has a pretty fabulous counter. Like what he'll do is like first put up walls around himself for 
protection from the impending jump shot, but as soon as he knows which direction his opponent is jumping, he edits the middle window, places a ramp, and then reverses the ramp all in one swift motion. So the walls will block the shot, while the ramp prevents your opponent from ramping up themselves. And while it is demanding, and you've got to know, you know, how to build and edit fast to perform it effectively, it is still one of the better counters for side jumps in general. And we definitely recommend heading into creative and just running a few drills so that you can just, you know, do it in real games. But for our next technique from Martaz, we've got a tricky way to counter players that try to jump shot you. But the thing is this, like it requires using a feature 99% of us never touch and that's pre-rotating your ramp. So the thing with jump shots is that they're usually pretty predictable. You know, your opponent hugs the close walls, edits their cone and floor and goes for the jump shot. If we try to place a standard set of stairs in their box, it won't do anything since they're too close. You don't have to actually see your bills rotate, which means you can rotate your ramp even while looking at other structures. But if we rotate our ramp first by bringing it out and pressing our rotate bind twice, it's now capable of placing over top anyone going for this jump shot, thus blocking the damage. And then all you gotta do is just follow up with a quick ramp edit and you should have your opponent inside their box with no real plan. Just like you're shooting a fish in a barrel. Overall, I gotta say this, man, a brilliant play that utilizes a feature no one predicts. But of course, once you're done, remember, you have to reset your stairs into the correct position again. So don't forget that and you're gonna be golden. But speaking of features like no one uses, Martaz loves to use pre-edited walls whenever you can. Now, pre-edits aren't the most useful thing in the world. All right, I get it. But I kind of believe they're more practical than most of us think. I mean, for one, one, you're shifting the time it takes to edit your wall from after you place it to before. And clearly, the time after you replace the wall is just much more critical. So even if it saves a split second, that can be the difference between your opponent being ready with their shotgun out and then being caught with their pants down. So really in situations where you have time to pre-edit, like if your opponent doesn't see you, for instance, placing pre-edited walls can lead to some really, really cheeky limbs that no one expects. And when I say nobody expects it, no one expects it. So most of opponents usually won't even be ready and all of a sudden you take their wall and they're totally exposed. So although pre-edits are niche and you know they're not really useful in a majority of fights, there are some slower paced fights where it can really be useful. But just like with the last trick too, like you gotta make sure you reset your wall when you're done because you definitely don't want to be stuck with a pre-edit. That would be the worst. So when it comes to taking build pieces, it's generally a good idea to have some sort of misdirection in play. You don't want to make it obvious which part you're taking so that your opponent has a harder time following along, which is why this technique that allows you to pickaxe floors through cones is so excellent. Basically, there's a sweet spot right on the very edges of the cone or floor, I guess, where you can just pickaxe and just actually hit your opponent's floor through their cone. I know it's crazy, right? <laughs> so most players would think their cone is the one being hit. After all, it's still up and in their control. But the whole time, you're sneakily taking their floor instead. So the best way to do this and how Martaz does it is to hit your opponent's cone first because you want to damage it a bit and also get that harvesting weak spot to appear. After one or two hits on the cone, that's when you switch to the floor by pickaxing the very edge. Replace that and then quickly just swap back to replacing the cone. Overall, like I think this is an incredible way to take control of pieces, especially if you're on high ping and you're not really able to just brute force your way through every piece like low ping players can. Definitely, you gotta give it a try. Now, this last technique is the crash pad pre-fire. However, it is sort of unfortunate because as we're making this video, it's the end of season four and no one knows if even crash pads are gonna stick around. So, you know, we're sorry if you're watching from the future and they're vaulted, but it's all good. Anyways, this is a safe and straightforward finisher move where you could just throw one to break bills and sneak in a shot as soon as you can. All right, to set this up, all you gotta do is just attach a wall above your opponent's box, then throw your crash pad at the top but you gotta be standing to the side and just throw it at a slight angle so that it doesn't land on you. As it's falling though, you get your shotgun out and just line up your aim so that you're ready to land a shot as soon as your opponent's bills break. I think this trick was first used to take walls with crash pads, but I kinda like this one a lot more. And even if your opponent is hiding in a cone, the crash pad should break that too. But forward facing ramps don't seem to get destroyed. If you try another side, it can work but it's just so inconsistent. I personally would just, you know, say don't use this technique against players with stairs in the box. But if they have nothing or a cone inside, it's gonna work flawlessly. All right, guys, so. 
That's gonna be it for today's video. Hopefully you guys learned a lot when it comes to confusing enemies with build techniques. All right guys, huge shout out to my main man, FaZe Martaz for always just being so unique and creative and just really just for sharing so many amazing tricks with us. Definitely subscribe to his channel if you haven't already. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and sub to our channel if you haven't. Listen, we got a lot more videos like this plan for season five. You do not wanna miss out, so you gotta make sure that you are sub for sure. Also, I gotta let you guys know this. We have a new Call of Duty channel coming out as well. If you're grinding Warzone or multiplayer, definitely head on over and subscribe there as well. Once again, bunch of crunch army, where you at? Your motivation guy is back. I'll see you soon.